Hi, camera. There's a camera over there on top of my tank. You're so happy. <laughs> Look at that liquid gold coming out. Do you remember why I rinsed this? There's all this pea and brine shrimp poop in oh, there, yeah, yeah. and I don't want to feed that to my fish. That's the best part. I taste no. the best. The fish don't eat that. The plants do. Plants do. Well, you got to have plants to have that happen. You have a tissue culture right there. I know, and you know why that's there? Because you're afraid of it? There's like um, over 200 gold rams in here. They're large enough to eat plenty of other food, but I like to give them baby brine shrimp too. They just go crazy for it. And then of course, out of my custom feeder, that's right. Extreme nano pellets. We come back here in about 10 minutes, all of that will be gone. I'm going to hold you to that. These are the secret tanks your wife can't know about, right? Yeah. So she, I think she's starting to troll me, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw his laundry room. I don't think anyone's ever seen your laundry room, really. So I next go in here now. The first thing I do, just to make it easy, since I keep my tanks covered, is I open all of the tops. And so, by the way, we're showing everything that this master breeder feeds because I know, how many times a day do you feed and how long does it take between all of the feeding? Um, like this feeding at night will take probably a half hour, half hour in the morning. And then in the daytime, it's usually just some of the fry that get another hit. And that's usually just a couple minutes. Not food, a hit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are we feeding here? Oh, so up behind you, we're going to start there. Now... This is actually just a hatching jar, but as you can see, there's no room in the fry yeah. rack. So they got to get a little food because they're free swimming now. And what are the, what's in there? I, I, I think they're angels. <laughs> nice. You wait till they get bigger than you remember? Yeah, I'll remember when they get down here. I see. And then we're going to go, we'll start with the small ones. Looks like rams? Rams. Um, angels, um, Bentley's favorite plecos, wobbin musters, is that what we call them? I don't know. Those are red koi angels and these are red koi angels also. And you can see that these red koi angels are way ready to be out of this tray. There's like a pleco in there, or some plecos um, yeah, too. Yeah, those are the um, L201 large spots. Okay, they're like the snowball type yeah, ones. Yeah, the snowball plecos. For these guys, I'm going to turn the air off so that I'm not just flushing the brine shrimp. Yeah, right this back is out, the right? Zis. Uh, it's a Zis hatcher. Box thing. There's some Wobbin Muster. I think that's how you say it. I don't really know. So I know people always question this, but I do it too. This is going to be live baby brine to baby plecos. Right. Baby plecos eat anything. That's the thing. Now, the, the thing is. They will eat this. There's also leaf I put in there for them to chew on. There's a piece of green bean in there. Um, I will also put in some um, uh, ceramicron and or the, um, the, the stick on tabs that whatever they're called. Oh yeah, like the, the Sarah XL tabs. Yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah. For, for they eat anything. And, and there's also a piece of wood in there. This is going to be maybe to get these um, pencil fish to come out for Jimmy. Those are the chunkiest pencil fish I've ever seen. Those are, we caught those in Peru. I know. I'm just saying you spoil those things. Yeah. This tank basically just has a pleco in it, pleco in it. They're, I'm getting ready to put uh, pairs of black rams in those. All right. Um, so next. Yeah, the fry. Uh, Ridiculous. You think these discus are too big to eat baby brine? I don't, because I literally feed everything baby brine. They love it. I mean, every time Jimmy comes over, I make him eat baby brine. Look, they almost eat it right out of the... That is fun. Right? And how did that get in there? Well, my guess is you're selectively wanting to breed them or something. <laughs> I don't know how that got in there. Uh, let's go here. And how much brine did you hatch out for this feeding? This would be a tablespoon okay. of eggs.
Now I could pour, obviously, but so the amount of amount of rams right here is just it's insane, huh? Yes. That's uh, between the three tanks, I bet you there's. 1500 I, if it was anyone else I would be like yeah right but I know you count them and I have to believe you because I also know that you bring us a lot of fish and then I come over and you still have way too many right so. story of my life too many fish this is the opposite though because when when you're not locked down from COVID right you travel too much you don't make fish now the midnight rams over here they're gonna eat some of this stuff too because I got plenty tonight So they'll go crazy. We'll give them some other food wow. too. But obviously they like it, huh? Yep. Would you say? Oh, Dean, will you ship me some of those? Um, I don't really ship fish, but you know, if you were to travel out here, you could probably get some from Aquarium Co-op. I just know that question was, wow, you're, you've been spawning the turbines? Yes. Actually, I, though- I find it funny, I'm more intrigued by that than those the hats, Rams. Those hats the same day the Rams did. Nice. So that's why I just kept them together. You should make me 10 billion stir by Corey. I know. sell so many of those. They were in a tray together. We'll buy them for 12 cents each. 12 cents, okay. Yeah. That's yep. good. Can, where did my ladder go? I don't know. How can I get these top fish? You're, I don't put tanks that high. That's. I just saw the reflection of my favorite light. Your favorite light. Yeah, yeah, the twenty dollar light. Yeah, it is. It's Home cool. It, light. You know, that's a bowl that screws in. Yeah. You know? It looks so good. Where did we use that? In Zenzo's my, place. Yeah, that's right. Because right, I found them in my fish room or my Home Depot, and I liked them. So I'm gonna say that these um, Vienna guppies like baby brine too. Oh yeah, I feed mine tons. And um, the apistos. Now I've always fed my apistos baby brine and other foods obviously also but i feel like when you feed them baby brine then they know there's going to be food for the fry ever since you told me that probably six seven years ago i adopted that principle and i found that it's always helped like with crebenzis and all kinds of yeah. stuff i i genuinely believe that's a true observation that is pretty close to what might be true in nature. Like, obviously, we didn't do any scientific tests, be, but, but, but you know, like, it panned out for me. You go dry in wet season, and when the wet season, mm -hmm. there's lots of food in the water. The fish know there's food. Um, let's feed these little rice fish some baby brine, too. And while we're doing that, we'll take a look and see if there's any eggs in the mop. All right. I'll be surprised because it's got to be pretty warm up there. Well, and this is actually also the um, the leopard frog pleco breeding tank. Oh, yeah. So in the center one, I've had one spawning, but I was not successful at keeping the fry. Happens to all of us, you know. There's some times when the fry just don't work. Actually, that's never happened to me. I've never happened? Always been successful, yeah. That's a joke, people. Oh, wow. Yahtzee. So there's some eggs in there, right? Yeah. Right here. here here's a little bit of uh, NERM talk. Do you think we could ship rice fish eggs like this? Yes, I think you could ship them easier than the fish. Nice. So I'm counting maybe a dozen eggs. How long has that mop, quote unquote, been soaking in there for? Two days. Oh, here's some more. Look at, there's a bunch in here. Nice. There's a whole bunch up in here. Okay, maybe two dozen eggs. I'm so, going to play the internet. The internet's going to say, aren't those eggs drying out? Yes. No. They're fine. You can even pick them up. And then we can just re-stick it. Right there. There you go. So I'm just looking at the females if they're having if they're carrying any eggs. Typically, they'll carry them in the morning and deposit them by about noon. I didn't know if they deposit the same day. I just see them and I go, oh, I wonder when they 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 brush up against them. They actually have little threads. The eggs do, huh. and so the females swim into the mop and the eggs rub off. Oh, look! All of the baby brine that we fed is gone. That's true. It's all sucked up into that matten filter. No, I'm just kidding. I actually ate it. So since the brine shrimp is gone, 
I usually supplement them with some extreme nano and out of my custom made shaker bottles oops look how dirty your fish room is why did I do that look at Dean cracking under pressure under ca on camera really uh, this will probably be gone in just a couple minutes also now yeah. this tanks gonna get a little bit more because there's a bunch of um, L333 mm -hmm. plecos in the wood yep and this tanks gonna get a little bit more because there's a bunch of um, L333 and also 201 plecos in here and I want that food to get down there where they're eating this tank we didn't give anything to yet no. or that tank these are both pleco breeding tanks okay so you probably won't be able to see but there are some fry in that cave that's the 201 group and this is the I call them wobbins for short uh, we got to give them some food so I'm gonna use some of these green flakes spirulina flakes yeah um, by the way let's talk about this in a second <laughs> uh -oh. once my hands are dry now I want these to sink so I just put them in the water and make sure they sink and these will be gone in the morning wow those tanks are cold yeah I guess not they're 82 degrees so Mr. Extreme Mr. Extreme if you're listening to me Andy Andy my first name is actually Andrew also, but I don't use you that. You let the secret out. I that did. was the one claim to fame I had that I knew <laughs> your real name. So, Mr. Extreme Andy, um, I get yelled at sometimes because people come over and they film and they say, why is he hiding all the labels of his foods? That's because he won't share any information. You hold everything back from I the internet. I keep everything back. It's because when I go to grab this food off the shelf, I grab the things to grab it. So Mr. Extreme, see this label here? Just use the Extreme Aquatic Food Spirulina Flakes and put that little square right here on this side. On this side, take another label and put all of this small print that no one can read anyway, <laughs> but you have to have on it. Well, if they have two labels, maybe it would be bigger. It might be, and also you don't have to wrap the corners then. You could just do two flat labels. That's got to be easier. Could be. And then when it's on my shelf, people will be able to see that I've got extreme, extreme, extreme. And what happened here? Why don't you have this jar, Mr. Extreme? That's because that's the Aquarium Co-op oh, fry food. Oh, that's patented, right? <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Oh, these guys will eat I'm, this I'm, stuff too. I'm pretty sure like Heinz ketchup or something probably patented the squeeze bottle. Someone on the internet's actually... Is raging right now like actually in 1912 it was this company I it probably know. was who knows I've got a few more fish to feed yet right you've barely fed any oh yeah I know but let's feed these guys some of this are those the is this the adult group of uh, the stir buys um, no these are other fry okay but they're bigger they are bigger and these are some rams that are pairing off but these aren't even the biggest midnight rams do you spawn the rams with the quarries in there and they what? no this is okay a, this is a grow out tank where I've, I've selected these rams for my future breeders so i but, thought as much but i thought maybe she is crazy since i'm up here right what could these possibly eat he's never fed his fish before so he doesn't know let's try bug bites Oh, oh, by the way, just so you guys know what these are, these are 333 plecos. I see. They'll eat anything then. Hopefully. I'm making, I never make these messes when no one's here. Sure you don't. I just sweep it on the Wait, floor. Wait, are we supposed to show the one dirty aquarium? Because you said... Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys always say, oh, look, your tanks are so big. Well, if you had that many fish in the tank, there would be nothing left for them to make a mess of. But look, I left a tank dirty just for you guys if you look at this tank the bottom's nice and clean the sides are nice and clean this tank the bottom's nice and clean sides are nice this tank is uh, I can't swear on camera so it's a disaster let's just say it's a disaster but the fish love it 
Now the difference is the previous two tanks each have one small bristle nose pleco. It's funny because there's a reticulated hill stream loach, but it doesn't do the same job. There's two reticulated hill stream oh. loaches, and they don't they don't eat the algae. They don't eat the scum. Yeah. And and the other thing is, it might not necessarily be eating it completely all, but they might keep moving it to where it's small enough where the filter takes care of it. One or the other. So, so I, that's I the difference. Is just the plucker. Have a dirty tank. Okay, You're let's a mad get man. let's get rid of the rest of the brine shrimp first. Um, At what point do you just take a shot of it yourself? Um, I've done that <laughs> totally by accident, but it ain't good. It's not like shrimp fettuccine or anything like that. Hmm. Um, this has got to go out out there. There's guppies, some other stuff to feed. But do you want to show them all the cool stuff? Well, if we're gonna feed this, we all have right. to. So. Because there's projects and all kinds of stuff out here that you guys haven't seen yet. Mm. Look how much stuff we bring to film. Oh, These are all the lenses and the cameras we're not using yet. And we can feed those new um, little red things. New little red things? Yeah, the new little red things. Oh, yes. So, down here there's a few guppies and there's some looks like vienna guppies yep and there's some uh betta whatever Maki, Maki yeah, that, those ones. i can never <laughs> remember that in here some rice fish i moved in from outside are we going to do a whole video on these super cool ponds or well we can um this is this is called a muck bucket what'd you call me <laughs> <laughs> It's a muck bucket. That's actually what it's called. So originally I was using this when I was doing shrimp. I had four of them way up ceiling height and I was using them to mix water or house RO water. So all I did, and I'm not going to pull this one out again because that one's easier to pull out over there. Um, I just, they were already drilled with holes. So I just turned it around and bent a piece of PVC. I think we should do a whole video on how to actually make it and drill it and do everything because this is almost a kitchen table project. This is a kitchen table project. Yeah. Well, we could do that. You think we could bend the pipe with a hair dryer maybe? Could we get no, it hot I enough? Use, I use the stove. Okay, well, yeah. Or I'm trying to, trying to make people not like get in trouble with their family. A hair dryer will not get it hot enough. Yeah. And obviously, we don't want everyone to have to go buy uh, a, know, a heat gun. But a stove will work. Yeah, okay. Still will work. If you can do it without uh, burning down the house. I can do it without. And, and it will, you can do it with an electric stove or a gas stove. It works either way. Here, here's the real test. Is that a project you can do while your wife is here? Or is she... Yeah. Okay, well, if it passes yeah. pass the wife test, It then. doesn't even smell the house up. Look at Guppy's, that tank. Guppy's got to get fed, right? Of course. I'm going to have extra brine shrimp today. You must just be feeding lighter. I never, I usually just find whatever tank I really want to spoil and pour the rest in. That's what I'm gonna do with the gold rams. Okay. Uh, there's there's one guppy in here because Corey gave me this this guppy grass, and there was actually a guppy in it. It lived in a five gallon. You didn't know that guppy grass makes guppies? No. So I'm just gonna feed him a little yeah. bit. Do you want oh, to do yes. that video, or you want me to show him now? I say we do that video. Let's, you know, I'm Let's sorry, clickbait, vote. but I know you guys are going to want to see the whole build and the best way to do it, and we don't have time to break one down and show you how to build it. What is this tank? This is the planted tank that that Lizzie from Aquarium Co-op. That's right. I <laughs> let her take this tank over and do anything she let wanted. Let her or made her? <laughs> I offered to let her. All right. And she took me up on the offer. So she took care of all of the aquascape planting. I'm playing with the background, um, which can be changed all different colors. Uh, I showed you earlier the sunspot. That'll come eventually. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about what fish and what shrimp are going to go in here. And these are the first fish that went in, the ember tetras. There's and you think an Oscar is going to be a good idea in here? No, I don't think the Oscar's <laughs> going to work. But one thing I was going to say is is the fish are brand new to the tank. 
Yeah, like an hour. And, and I want them to know where I'm going to be putting food, so they they better know my name. They, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh man. I bet they'll take this like crazy. I may or may not hang out with Dean a lot. Wow, yeah. look at them eat. I love. I honestly love watching fish eat brine shrimp because you can see the enjoyment. You can literally like it's like watching a kid eat candy or me eat candy, really. And and it's 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 a. Uh, but they frenzy because if you put dry food, it's a in, frenzy. That's right. Fish I mean. don't I frenzy. Them on it. Yeah, <laughs> let's go for a ride, buddy. <laughs> he's he's picking. Because even the a lot of people don't realize that even monos and other shrimp will eat brine shrimp too. Like okay, they they need they that protein. It. They love it. And these happen to be the aquarium co-op brine shrimp eggs. I mean, any brine shrimp egg, they'll go nuts for. But uh, these ones just are... Well, I'm tired of saying why mine are better. I'll let other people tell you. But I think they're the best. And, uh, yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Totally. I think you're going to sit at your desk and watch this tank a lot, actually. <laughs> no, I just sit on the floor. and just All that right. Thing. All right. You know, that's actually something I miss. I haven't laid on the floor and watched fish in probably four years now. Right. I used to do it... All the time. I think it's because when I had more tanks in my house. And, well, when I had less space, I was forced to put tanks on the ground. And then when you lay down on the ground, sometimes you're too lazy to get back up. Right. And then so I would actually see some cool stuff laying there for a while. So there's a couple tanks in here. And that's one of the some. benefits of having a, a big or a lot of tanks is you can actually go back a second time and be like, who did finish their dinner? Who's right. getting seconds? <laughs> See, I almost didn't begin. I don't know why you always close, oh, I guess you close those three, but. Okay, the rest for the gold rams. Oh, these are gold rams. Yeah, but you meant the ones in the 40, huh? I meant the ones in there. Yeah. I see. Oh, then we have to go up and get some clams. Yep, or I assume. Do you ever feed them bloodworms or just clams? I feed them bloodworms and, and, what are these? So have we fed everything yet? If you're doing frozen foods, you haven't done that yet. <laughs> the crazy part is I can't believe you keep the frozen food on a different level of your house. For a guy <laughs> that has everything in its place and 100% organized. Where? Okay, let's go see the frozen <laughs> food. <laughs> All right. Videos like this right here is what we do all the time. We put out a video every week that's educational. We also do a live stream that's educational and a Q&A session. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. And, and I can't keep it downstairs because of this. This is my freezer. There's some aquarium co-op brine shrimp eggs. Yeah. There's some frozen food. Oh, I, I yeah, you got the those brine from, shrimp. Um, can't really say who right now. Sure. And there's bloodworms, brine shrimp, both cubed and flat packs. There's a local store that's supplying you way too well. Um, there's cyclops. And well, th I think that was a mistake because Randy w was only supposed to order 60 and he ordered 60 cases. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad I paid for that. I think I ended up paying for it. Oh, well. Then I'm glad that happened. Yeah. You'll take it out of me in a, a yeah. Peru trip or something, I'm sure. Exactly. All right. So I can see how you don't have the space, we but... we got to feed some fish down there. Right? I'm more impressed that, that that freezer looks like it's from 1970. It is. Or earlier. It'll probably last forever now. Because it's, it's that old school, it's made, and it's, it's going to live forever before they learned, like, you better make it to break it. Otherwise, you only ever sell one. So that'd be the discus... And you've got that dialed in. You know that's 6.2 ounces just by feel, right? No, because what are these cups, right? <laughs> They're like 8 ounces, I think. Or eight 4 ounces. each. So are they 4 each or maybe... It might be 4 each. 4 each, so that's yeah. 2 ounces, right? I know. That's how you feed at a fish store normally, except I have to do it with 1 pound yeah. flats. Break They're, it in half. And the reason I don't buy the 1 pounds is because they don't break as easy. Yeah. I hate when the plastic's actually too thick and you then can it, like right. stretch it way too far. Clams. Yeah, you need clams, that's true. So you're the one that's buying all the clams besides me. I am. How many clams do you have? How many bags you got? We were out for a while. 
I'll tell Katie on you. Uh, you need one? I got an extra. No, nine. we do have some, but we were out, and Katie is really taken to feeding Ladybird. Yeah. It's like her favorite thing to do. She's like, well, you got to feed Ladybird breakfast, and she needs lunch, and she needs dinner. <clears throat> Those smell. Those don't smell like a Wait, you don't put those in your mouth to thaw them? No. And then you just baby bird them to the the <laughs> puppers when you get down there. I don't even know if I'd cook those. But huh. they should be edible, right? No wonder they're not spawning. You're not baby birding yeah, them. Yeah, that's got to be it. That's got to be it. <laughs> oh, we should give these some food, too. Do you always use Hannah Montana as your uh, backgrounds for your tanks? No, she's not in the tank. Oh. There's a whole story behind Hannah Montana. Should we let people know? Because I know people lost their minds last time. Yes, they they thought you were just a giant weirdo. So, so, as you can see, this is a race car. That's a race car. These are race cars. Are you just trying to make it make us think you're more macho? This is a race car. Behind there, there's a race car. Behind that door is and another Hannah Montana under poster. Under this pile of stuff, there's a race, a slot car race track. It looks like it's Emerald City Speedway. Right. So, I used to have races here for slot car racers on a monthly basis. $10,000 buy-in. And one of them was my birthday. And so they all got together and everything that came for my birthday was Hannah Montana stuff. So this is actually a piece of the wrapping paper that we cut out. They, they cut it out, put it on the door, of course the poster, and of course, you know, you, you, you just have to, fish tanks went in front of it. You know, I didn't pull it off the wall. Sure. Sorry, I didn't pull off the wall. I have a little girl. She <laughs> liked Hannah Montana. Oh, by the way, we're feeding um, catfish wafers with wood. Yeah. To these, um, I don't even know what these are called, but, but somewhere in the dregs of aquarium co-op videos, there's a video in Peru with Corey sitting in the middle of a small river, cooling off, and you were talking about how the sand was sharp. Yeah, for the corridors and stuff, yeah. That is where these came from. I remember that. We were catching tons of them. These are, they, I, flee, I believe they're called Lancelotus. I think you might be right. And I kept them because I was fascinated by the tall dorsal fin. Corey kissed one. I probably did kiss, did one. kiss one. I was kissing anything on that trip. <laughs> so I kind of figured out that they chew on wood, so I'm using these wood chewing chips. All right. Sorry, these guys got fed earlier. Okay, discus first right here. They're getting ready to spawn. They might not be too interested in food. Uh, these discus ate baby brine shrimp. They're going to eat this too. Do you normally transition from baby brine to uh, frozen brine shrimp? I think that's what went in, right? Frozen brine and also lots of, they, they eat lots of dry food. Okay. Extreme nano pellets, that's usually what I went to next. Um, krill flakes, they, I want them to eat everything. That's, that's my actual goal. This is just a little protein for the plecos. These guys will usually come out for food now. Oh, you're missing some of the. Whoa, new... there's a camera there! <laughs> That's amazing! The trick is, all you have to do is turn a camera on, and Dean will put a show on. <laughs> I know. Half the time, we don't even turn the camera on, we just laugh at Dean doing things. You gotta show off the uh, eggs. Oh, yeah! Yeah. Oh, yeah! This is really cool. So right before they got there, or right before Corey and Jimmy got here, the angelfish started spawning on the head of my Easter Island. Is statue. it is the Easter Island statue? Oh. Is it a fertility thing? Did, did you get did you get the, the pleco swimming? The pleco? Yeah, the giant pleco. And and talk about midnight rams. Look at the size of those midnight rams in there. I was noticing your bed is over here. Yeah, you know that that that's that's actually a breeding setup. 
Mm -hmm. It's a video that we should make on how I do it. Um, right now, they're not together because I was planning on traveling. Right. But they're they're literally they're ready to spawn right now. And they they probably haven't been fed today either. You feed frozen more than once a day, or just once a day? I feed it about every other day, actually. Okay. Most of the time, morning and night, it's dry. Um, sometimes the fry over here will get um, cyclops, mm -hmm. the frozen cyclops cube. Um, but I, I frozen food's more way more expensive than dry food, so I try to feed it less. And with, I hate to say it, but with, with, no, I don't hate to say it, but the truth is, since fish foods have been getting better and better, even the discus I don't rely on frozen so much for. Um, makes, makes my life easier, so. Are those rubber bands to keep the temp from moving? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Because, because I would, I would, typically I would bump them. Yeah. And, and when you, it's not so bad when you bump it higher, as long as it's not too much higher. Mm -hmm. How many hours do you think you spend a day in the fish room on average when not traveling? If I have to? Not if you have to, but like if you, are you thinking like, oh yeah, because let's say it takes you an hour to feed. Is it mostly like, yeah, most days I'm just feeding or do you have other time you spend on stuff normally? But it depends on how much maintenance I have to do. Like, like if I'm cleaning the matten filters, you know, that's an hour per tank basically. But it's once every six months on that tank. Sure. So what I normally do is, let's just take this tank, for example. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty much all ready to sell. I try to sell the whole tank. And then since there's no fish left in the tank, that's a good time to clean the filter, clean the tank. So I'll drain the tank completely, take everything out, clean the filter, and set it back up and then add fish right to it. So I'm not doing five of them all the same day. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing them as needed. Uh, and I found that that's an easier way to do it. I even do that with the um, these sponge filters. You know, it's like when I'm having to move stuff from tank to tank, that's the time. Quit it, will you? Uh, when I'm having to move stuff from tank to tank, that's the easiest time to do your maintenance. So I just work it into with whatever else is going on. I still got extra blood worms. And you know who else is going to get these? We got too much food. Geophagus. They'll eat them. Yep. Here, Jimmy, you go give these to the geophagus. No, it's slimy. Is it always clams with these guys? No. It's clams, bloodworms, snails. Um, at oh, that's one right, you point, did show the snails, yeah. At one point, they were eating some of the... Um, what are those little red wiggly things that... Mosquito larvae? Oh, uh, Viber bites? Viber bites. Okay. But, but now they're not anymore. They won't or you just don't feed they, them? They won't, they won't take them anymore. Interesting. So female, male, and I have no idea what the smaller one is. Um, is this far enough away for you? Yeah. Okay. Is it too far away for Dean? That's the question. No, I can do this. They start attacking it right away. Sneak up the ladder here. So what do you think of these backgrounds, Corey? I, I'm torn. I mean, I do like having backgrounds, but if I'm being 100% honest, I don't like them with the matten filter. Oh, these guys. Because it goes three quarters, like, oh, awesome. Right. And then, like, why did you make it lame? Where right. right above it, I'm like, ooh, that looks super cool. Right. And I know the testing you're doing with, like, this. So I know there's some yep. stuff where we've been thinking and, and trying. And in general, I'm a fan of backgrounds. I'm officially not a fan of Universal Rocks as a company. But right. there's so few choices that yeah. I'm forced to use some of their product. So of all the fish in my fish room... What are your two most favorite? And you only get two. I'll treat it as like, what would I want to take home if I was... Right now, I feel like 
I would really take your group of uh, Orange Lasers home. I really miss reading those because I yep those were super fun. So I would take that, and I'm trying to think of what other fish would I enjoy keeping. Like you got a lot of angels, you got a lot of rams. I like to look at them, but I don't like to keep them. Uh, rice fish, I have them, but they are they on my list. Me. Yeah, they are on my list of like super cool. Yep. I'm trying to think what I would want to watch. And I might do a big school of stirbys because I. They're kind I of have cool. this dream of like where I've got a tank with like 500 of them. I still remember when we went to the fish farm and saw those schools yeah. outside. I'm like, oh my God, I want a school like that someday. I mean, I like all the plecos, but I already know like they'd go to my house and I'd be like, yeah, they look cool, but I'm too lazy to spawn and you, them. And I'm too really, busy. They don't really come out where you can see them. Right. A lot. I do like the discus, but I, I couldn't say they're my favorite. Like I'll probably get some from you at some point and then keep them for six or eight months and be like, that was a cool phase I did, but right. I know I'm not going to love them forever. And well, I, I got to fall in love, but I'd have to have that still. I'd have to fall in love with them. Yeah. But you have very different fish tastes than I do in general. And the things we overlap on, we both already have, like the guppies yeah. and things like that. So. Yeah. No, I, I could pick the, uh, the pistos, though. Uh oh. Lights are going out. Must be oh, like 11. No. Jimmy, it's 11. That's right, we're filming. We got, by the way, just so people know, people, to give you a reference of time, we got here at 7. That's right. We're now four hours into filming to make this video and one other video happen, but just know that, you know, why don't you make more videos? Well, they take a long time to film, that's why. I really thought it was the pizza, but, you know. We did order some pizza. Who am I to say? We ordered pizza knowing that we were going to be here for a long, I was like, we probably won't be out of here before midnight, and I ate at 4, and so I'm like, well... Oh, is that the is that the Wi-Fi timers that we sell? How convenient was that? It is, you know. Then there's is this them? That yeah, is, you know. And you can also just tap the button and turn the lights on and off. That's actually one of my favorite features. Is that it? Like we didn't even stage that. Like literally, that's why I use them. So when I'm in my fish room outside of the normal hours, I pull out the phone, flip things back on. Yep. Yeah. Some, sometimes I do that when it's late night feeding, because it happens frequently. Then I can say, okay, I'm going to leave the lights on for another hour. Mm -hmm. Look at these guys. These guys. So this yeah, is the th this is actually the first apisto that I ever spawned. Huh. In the 80s. So what are we in now, Jimmy? The 20s. Yeah. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. That was the first apisto I ever spawned. Wait, I'm trying to do math. Like, all right. Yeah. All right, well, we can end this video and talk about... Well, we got, we got brownies. Yeah, and there's more pizza. Nice. Right.